Hi everybody. In this video, I am going to be doing some updates to datatier.net using datatier.net. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg, except for I know the chicken came first in this case. But what I'm going to do, so I wanted to show you this just because somebody might want to, uh, if you ever want to work on datatier.net or if I ever die or something, somebody else might want to take this over because I think it's a pretty neat project. Been working on it for about 15 years. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you, this is my SQL Server database. I have a few of them, so I've got some backups of my database, and I've backed up my code. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a new table. I'm going to build a UI designer. So I'll just uh, let me run the program really quickly, and I'll, sorry. And I'm kind of thinking this through. This is all, uh, you know, having a like fully designed this yet but I'll just open up this project this is the data tier dot this is the data tier dot net project itself these are the databases or to me the tables that are in the data tier dot net database and my thinking is oh sorry I haven't compiled let me let me show you the dev version sorry I haven't ran this yet I added a new button I'll just show it to you here in the data editor hang on there Sorry, a lot of things. I'll start with D there. Okay, I added this uh, new field called UI Creator. It's just a button so far. That's all I've done. So that's kind of my thinking. But what I'm going to do is, so you have a table selected. So I'll just run, show you how this works. And I haven't created the forms or controls that are going to pop up. I'm kind of thinking this through out loud. But so let me... If I run this version and go to Mata, excuse me, manage data. Okay, why? I must have grabbed one of the. Hang on. Why is this button not visible? Oh, I know why. Very simple. And this button here only shows if it's a .NET five project. So I'm gonna switch those because that is going to look weird if this button here is uh, not shown because this button here only gets shown for Blazor projects I think is what the for .NET 5 projects let's try this one more time sorry about that visible is a pretty uh, pretty uh, required property to have to make things show up okay so now if we select a table oh that was already visible so we got to do that let's go back I know what the deal is okay so that was invisible for a reason everything gets turned visible or invisible in this method called UI enable so let me change visible back to false and we'll go to code I'll just close that okay UI enable is my guess yep pretty consistent trying to do that okay so if has selected table uh, this dot UI creator button dot visible equals true and I'll just come down here okay all right so that should show our button sorry that's a false Okay, so now we're going to try to run this. And sorry, the first part of this is starting kind of slow. I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so now we have our UI creator. Wow, there's something kind of weird looking right there. I don't know what that is. I guess that's just, I know what it is. Never mind, that's just the uh, reflection. I might work on that a little bit. Looks kind of weird though when I... I think it's just early in the morning okay so I have my UI creator button sorry that's all I was trying to do get that showing up so now our button is gonna have to do something so what we're gonna do is end up having a database control I mean a control and a form to do the editor but before we do that this video is about creating our table so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new table in SQL Server I always use an auto number identity uh, is true primary key you don't have to with datatier.net but 
it's, I prefer it on every table. I've had debates with some DBAs don't like it on certain join tables and on really large databases I can agree the extra field is not really you know it can add a difference in size but I don't work with databases where one field matters I've got lots of hard drive space I just deleted 200 and 13, I just deleted 165 gig of my video projects before this video because I was down to 50, less than 50 gigs. So I wanted to free up my hard drive space. So it kind of feels liberating, but it kind of felt sad deleting all my old videos. But oh well, life goes on. So now we're just going to call this, we're going to give it a name, I guess. This, uh, that's going to be the name of your. UI you're creating so I'm, my thinking is you might want to rebuild this after you uh, build it once is why I'm going to save it in the database and then next I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to just call it UI type and that's going to be an integer it's going to be a num so it's going to either be blazor or windows forms for now there might be something else someday <clears throat> excuse me had to get a drink okay now next is going to be and we're gonna have to have another table for fields I just realized because of uh, you're not gonna obviously want to do every field and we're gonna have it we'll give it a table name yeah, that's, uh, I'm gonna go to 64 I rarely see table names that big if it's Every now and then some databases I inherited have really long names. but Okay, and then lastly, I am going to, let's see. Um, I don't know what else we're going to need for this. We'll come back if we need more. But I've got that set as identity specification equals true. To make sure I did that. Okay. All right, so we have our four. We have these four and I'm gonna add one more we'll call this UI um, we'll just call them user interfaces sounds good doesn't have to be anything fancy and now we're gonna create another one called user interface fields sounds good not really the I might call it UI fields for short uh, okay set primary key I've wanted to for I don't know almost 20 years I've wanted this ability to all at once when I create a new table to have that always be uh, the first field but haven't really tried real hard to automate that but it's just something I do every single table so it would be nice to save that 30 seconds Okay, next we're going to call this D. Yeah, that's fine. DTN field ID. I should have done that. We'll go back and do that. Hang on. Okay, so we've got our field ID, and we're going to call it field order. We'll use ordinal to sound all fancy. All right. And then next, we're going to use uh, data type. And this might, not, I don't know if that's a reserved word or not. We'll see. Um, that's going to be an unknown. So we'll just say it. Okay, and that. It's probably some things like. Um, Required. I'm just trying to think of some validation things that might come in handy for uh, a field. Uh, we also need to know the table ID that this came from. Well, the field ID. The field ID has the table ID, so we probably don't need it. Okay, never mind. So does the um, the UI. Oh, what what did we just create? We're gonna call this user interface ID. 
So I do need something here. User interface ID. Okay, so that's going to give us the. I need to know this field links to the new user interface that we created. And let's see, I think, okay, so some other things for validation. You might want to have a maximum length. Call it max length. And then might give you a min length. I can think of a few use cases where you need at least so many characters such as a password or other things and then we've got the next thing will be for validation purposes you could have a min range and I'll use a oh, what do they call that a decimal We'll go with uh, eight and four is probably. We'll do that. We don't need too much. Okay. Oh yes, you can have. No, one thing I like about using DataTier.net versus Entity Framework, anything that defaults to zero, I don't have to do anything because they're gonna save as zero. If it's if that's the default, sometimes I use a minimum a default anyway in the database, in case it gets updated via SQL or other things. But I don't have to worry about it in this for for anything numeric. It'll just put a zero in there. Uh, and then I'm trying to think. Okay, that's our min length, min range, max range. Sorry, that would probably be doesn't really matter, but. Oh, same thing, sorry. Okay, I just copied and pasted that to save, type in that. All right, so that gives us our, I'm not gonna do anything with dates for validation. I know you could have some, technically, I mean, I know there could be some date validation that needs to be done. That's kind of more, uh, I'm going to kind of design this with some custom business logic places you can do because it so we're going to leave that alone for now might come back and add it and that's enough for now well there might be more we need for this um I don't have the field name but I know what we do need and that's caption because the database may not have it and that would be the whatever you want to display for the label and we'll go with something like that it's probably fine yeah that I'll let you leave null because you you might just want to use the field name or I could have the program set the field name when you automatically set the caption to the field name and then to the and then you can change it if you wanted to sorry just kind of thinking this through here a little bit as we design it and that's fine I'll just default those to zero. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's see. Might want to um, give us. Okay, we'll leave it. I may need a a folder. I'm trying to think of the where to create this, which is I don't think I need. Obviously, I'm not going to do it in this table, but I think in our user interfaces, I'm going to have to go back to that for a second. So we'll just call this. Uh, user or UI field is fine. Fields, uh, I'm trying to think. That's we'll just go with that. I think everything else I used uh, singular. Might have should have called that user interface instead of interfaces. Let me see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Let me save this. Let's rename it. Okay, and now we'll just, this isn't gonna like us. I hate that option of um, 
And sometimes I turn it off the option of allow designer changes. I'm going to temporarily turn this off. So let me go to uh, designers. Let's see. That. I'm temporarily turning this off. I don't like this for anything. I wish this had an option that said only for tables that have data. It's kind of silly to me that, you know, I can understand if you have one record in there, it matters. You know, you don't want to overwrite your database, but if you don't have any data in a table, you're just in design mode. I think that should be okay to do the, you know, without the message, even if you have that option on, but that's just, just my rant about what I think that option would be better for. Okay, so here, that's not what I wanted. Design, that's what I wanted. Okay, so now we can create our field and I'll put that right back when we uh, are done. Okay, in the, what I wanted this to be is the path. And I'm thinking, I don't even know if I want that on each. I'm gonna go ahead and do it here. I'll just put path. I might wanna give you somewhere else. We'll go with that for now. It's because I might want to uh, have like a project path because the way this normally works is your data tier library that data tier.net knows about it doesn't know what's above it or I mean you know it, there's probably ways to find it but that's not really the way data tier.net works it works it's in its own class library so all the projects of a data tier will look like this these four projects it doesn't know like in this project the data tier doesn't know about this stuff you know there's ways to the references all go from data tier.net client to this not the other way around so there's you know it wouldn't be impossible to climb a tree and find stuff but it's better to have the user set it somewhere so we're probably going to need one more table and we'll finish this. So I've got the path there, but I'm still going to leave this here because you might want to break up your projects into, you know, different uh, areas or things like that. So we'll go ahead and just save this again. And now I'm going to turn that option back on just so I don't forget. I can't afford to actually mess something else up that might be something important. So back to options and back to designers. Put that back. Okay. Okay, so now I've got our table in place. Let me refresh this. So I've got user interface and UI field. Next, I'm going to add one more called, well, I've got an admin table. Hang on, that's probably what we need. We don't need a, a no, each project's going to have their own. Let me go to project. I'm just thinking. Let me quickly look at how many a project. Okay. I don't have a lot of uh, store procedures around projects. I don't have to worry about modifying it. It'll be automatic, so that's fine. So we're going to add a new field to the project table. So this I'll just do in SQL Server Management Studio. And we'll call this could, uh, we'll just call it uh, projects you project uh, UI project folder, sorry. UI folder. Okay, something like that. And we'll give this again. It's probably fine. And that can be null because we don't want it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have our new field to our project. And I'm trying to get all this right because once I, this is one of the downsides to datatier.net is if I mess up datatier.net, I have to manually go fix stuff until I can get it to compile and build. So that's why I keep a backup before I uh, do this. And I've got the code on GitHub, but try to always uh, 
my, my latest one here is well this is all we're doing this is all the new update everything else is backed up so anyway we're gonna go ahead and build with datatier.net which is why you came so sorry for all this setup stuff but I'm just showing you how I work on this and I'm barely awake so it's 6 in the morning this is my free time a lot of times well my whole day I'm free but I work on too many things okay so now I am going to go ahead and run datatier.net and build and include our new projects our new our new uh, tables so let's go ahead and do that probably something else I need but we'll worry about that okay and here is our project folder which is just to go over there to the end oh it doesn't sorry I'm on the wrong one yeah so that's the class library which is that is this right here this is actually a solution folder but anyway we will go ahead and I am going to build I just want to uh, it's one of those things it's always a little scary when you're building on the uh, tool that you use to build with but we'll go ahead and do that okay now here's the part I've got to update our project file because and I really hope this doesn't give me any problems because I'm using the actual one I used to always uh, uh, go use a copy and I may do that I just backed this up so let me I think I'll do that because I don't want to try to write to the one we're using because it probably will say you can't do that or it might. So we no, I've got to use the one I'm writing to. We're just going to see what happens here. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't give us any problems. this might complain because we're uh, using these problems where projects were updating but we'll see and by the way I made a decision not to upgrade this project to .NET 5 I tried it and it might have been possible but it wasn't easy first my first attempt didn't work so I just gave up but kind of like Visual Studio Microsoft said they're not going to update Visual Studio because okay well that seemed to work now we've got to update our store procedures and this is the part that would be good if, if I forget this this is where it's if I've, I've had times where I forgot to do something like this and or forgot to include the project files and then datature.net is messed up but we're all okay so now we have our datature.net has been rebuilt so we'll go over to our uh, store procedures and just show you there should be new store procedures here for uh, user let me refresh Okay, so where's our user interface and our UI field and our project table has our new uh, field. If I go to that, here's our new field for UI folder path. So the whole data tier now has been updated, so we have all that. So sorry, this is a kind of a uh, not very thought out video. I'm just kind of thinking this through as we go along. And next, I'm going to go to Reload All. Yes, we want to stop debugging. Okay, now this is where I hope it was able to do all this. We will see. Crossing fingers and toes. Okay. I'm more confident in this thing now. I used to be uh, a little more... Uh, 
concerned whenever I was building because it was something goes wrong it's hard to kind of fix itself I have to go manually fix it and then debug it and do it again but I've been using this thing for a while most of the bugs have been fixed by now so next we're going to go to our project editor I want to put the, uh, the UI path somewhere and I'm trying to think of where because I've already used up most of our uh, our space here but I've got a little space down here this option yeah I'm gonna definitely want to leave that but I think I might let me see how big is this and that's gonna dock and expand to the okay well this ain't gonna work let's go back sorry just trying to think of the best way to do this um let's move this down a little what I'm wanting is to take all these and go down a little and put it if I'm gonna put another little browse box it makes sense this is a control oh I didn't even use it in this and I'm not gonna bother to update it right now but I have a control called label text box browser control that I have written since this was written as part of data juggler dot win dot controls which is what I usually use for Windows forms but for this we're not going to uh, bother okay let me think what's the font size on that all right we're going to go to font size 11 uh, I hate to do that I'm blind as a bat I'm just trying to see the let me see if these are all uh, okay Alright, and this. Um, that's not what I want. A line. Yeah, there. Okay. So now. There. Okay. Just trying to get this down. This is going to be UI folder path label. Or UI path label. And that needs to be a L. Okay. <clears throat> and next, I am going to add... Um, Let me see the text, sorry. I'll call it folder. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fine. I think user interface would fit there. Try it, but don't think it'll fit. Nope, didn't think so. That's why we called it. UI folder is fine. All right, so now, and this is going to be the UI folder text box, and this is the UI folder. What's this called? Sorry, it, something happened in Visual Studio. This used to not do this. Every time you switch, when the properties window is there, you have to redo this. It's kind of weird. Let me dock this maybe, but seems weird Let's see okay that's what it was never mind blaming Microsoft for the free tool they give me I'll uh, look in the most problems occur between keyboard and chair okay and next we are going to just call this UI UI folder browser button 
something like that. What is this one called? Project browse project folder button. So we'll call this browse UI folder UI path. Doesn't matter. All right. And now the events I always add, which there's going to be a mouse enter. And I have a mouse leave. This just means you put your mouse over a button. It turns into a pointer. Or, you know, it's kind of weird. I noticed Microsoft doesn't do that a lot, but to me, for Windows, that's a little... It's, it's a web thing, but I like it to indicate that you're over something. You know. And you can also... You need to disable things in that button. Things or do things. Okay, and next is our click event. And we will call this... This is Regionizer. You may or may not be aware of this. This is a. I've got some videos on YouTube about this, or it's on GitHub. It's just GitHub.com slash. Here, I'll show you in three seconds. In case you're still here, I'm probably talking to myself by now, but that's okay. There. So that's this project here, Regionizer. So here, if you want to stop the video for a second, I'll pause for one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's Regionizer. Now I'll show you why I use it, but I go Format Selection, and that's how I do all this, where this is in alphabetical order, the methods are in alphabetical order, and the properties are in alphabetical order. And I realize you have this stuff up here, but if I'm looking for a property, I like coming down here and looking in the properties region. If I'm looking for a method, I like looking in the methods region. So that's my in tangent on regionizer but it's just a tool I like because it kind of it's the cure for spaghetti code to me so now what I'm gonna do is um, let me see how I even do things I haven't worked on this project so long I'll do things this way I like to be consistent whenever I do stuff um, I don't think I need to do anything in UI enable if this changes I just need to know well, I do, because the way this save stuff works, it only, uh, this this app stores when you start a project. Pretty sure that's the way I did this. Let me see. Maybe it's not here. I thought there was a, um, a way that says, uh, I think somewhere I store the, a serialized copy which means just a binary version of the previous project so that way I can take my current project and I serialize it again let me see if that's in here somewhere um, I don't want to just look let me see yeah there it is has object change let me find I'll show you this really quickly just to case anybody ever works on this Okay, so this is in my UI enable method, so it was here. So I have this initial selected project, and what that is, it's just a byte array. And I'll go to where that is set. Yeah. So this is like when I, this is the setup of a project. So each time a project is, when you open a project, the first thing that gets called is this is called from the main form. And here are, I pass in a parameter of the main form, so this object can call back to the its parent. There's some other ways to do that also. But anyway, so here we have the serialized object. So then th th this right here, this has object changed. I can just serialize the object again, and then I compare two byte arrays. If they're exactly the same, then you're going to get the same byte array. I don't know. This is something I wrote a long time ago. But uh, so we have, that's, uh, we'll go ahead and leave this. So that way the save buttons will get handled. And here... Instead of saying enable Blazor features, this is going to be selected project dot UI folder path. That's that new uh, field we added when we built our data tier, and it's going to say this dot UI folder text box dot text. Okay, so that's all we need, and that gets us that, and that's all I'm going to do in this video. I just wanted to get this. We'll try to save one just to see. I'm going to have to work on the designer offline because that's going to take a long time. I just wanted to show you how to work on. That's how I work on datatier.net to add a field. So it's a pretty, uh, 
I don't know. I've been using this for a long time. I realize the Entity Framework is Microsoft's recommended tool, and I, I've used it in work positions. I personally, I like stored procedures, and I'll show you briefly in case you're new to datatier.net how some of the uh, database interactions work. I'll do that really quickly for this database ends. But I just want to open up one of our projects, and we'll open up. I'll open up datatier.net itself. And we'll go to, let's see, I'm trying to think what table I'm going to be using, but we'll just pick uh, this one, doesn't matter. Okay, so we have our UI creator there. So, uh, that's, that's not where I wanted to be. I wanted to be here, edit project. Okay, UI folder. Now, I didn't change that code yet, so we're not going to, I'm going to have to go do that offline. I'll do it as soon as this video changes. But the one thing I do want, or maybe I'll do it, but the one thing I want to do now is just go look in here. Just copy that to my clipboard so I can go over to Windows Explorer and just get right to it. So here's our, this is our data tier project. We want to go one above it. And this is a little kind of a decisive thing here thinking about this designer because the way this app works I have a uh, here's the client folder and there's a forms and a controls and this I'm gonna have to think about a little bit but we're not gonna we're gonna this is gonna be about forms I, I'm kind of making a decision here cuz it's a uh, it's just easy. I'm, I don't think I want to have this thing create user controls that go on forms. That's the way this. That's the way datatier.net actually works now. But I may or may not cancel that. I'm just. Uh, so we we'll, we will go to the client and just select the forms for now. I'm just going to make sure our save works. Is all I want to show you. So we'll. Here's our next. Oh, I know what's not going to happen. Even though we just saved that, and that'll be in the database. Ah, that also, interestingly, I think I'm going to have to do on the text changed event, because that didn't do anything. Hang on, one second. Sorry, I haven't worked on this app in a while, so some of this kind of comes back to me the more I work on it. Okay, and next will be, let's go back to the data editor, I mean the project editor. Let me see if there's an event there on the text changed event. Yes, okay, so we will go to that and just look at it, because that probably gives us 90% of what we need. And we'll just create a text changed event here. Again, I'm going to use regionizer format selection. And it's on my list to make some new videos for regionizer. I, I think it's a pretty neat tool for formatting a C sharp document. And I'll show you some other things it does here in a second. So now we go to. Are, uh, here we're gonna copy that code that was on my clipboard mainly I just wanted to get this and we're gonna say this dot selected project dot UI folder path equals this dot UI folder text box dot text and that does not need a two string on there I don't really know why why did that have a two string text is a string sorry sometimes I find old code and don't know what that old me was thinking but you know live and learn so now we have this so that will now when I serialize the object that will uh, okay this is not something I think I need Okay, that was different because the other stuff, that was that auto-filled child folders, and basically that means 
I'll show you. Uh, if you select this project right here, all the properties such as that would be the data tier project folder. All these properties like your controllers folder get set in this little wizard. I'll, I'll show you when we run it here next. We'll go ahead and do that. I got one more thing I want to do though. There is a method I imagine called display project is probably what I yep display to selected selected project and we are going to call this string UI folder UI yeah that's fine okay and we're just going to say UI folder equals select uh, yeah selected project dot UI folder path that's fine and I know I could have used rename there but for one it's just about as easy all right and next we're going to say that we're just going to do the actual display here so this dot UI folder text box dot text equals UI folder path okay and here we call our UI enable again which just makes sure the right buttons are visible and displaying and all that so that will get us our displaying and I think our save button will also show up so I just want to see if we can save one is all I'm trying to to do and I'll do the rest offline and I've got to wake up and eat breakfast do a few I don't usually don't usually eat breakfast but I've been getting up so early like at two o'clock that I'm now eating breakfast or lunch is really what it is at seven or eight a.m. some days but it seems to work out for my schedule okay sorry I'm not running I thought I was running I just built Okay, so open up our project. Okay, we just got an error. No, we didn't. Sorry. I was like, what the hell is going on? Okay, and now I want to select this folder. I may think about controls for a second, whether it has a control that's a little more... Uh, involved here and I will go ahead and just say now you notice that save became enabled as soon as I did this I'll show you that really quickly there so that that's the way the um, that serialized object the initial object didn't have the UI folder path so as soon as I type anything in there the save button becomes enabled but so there so we have our little button and I'll go ahead and just hit save okay and now I will go back select the oh not here sorry wrong place okay and we have our UI folder so that's just how I work on data tier.net it's not a, and I'll show you also this is what I was trying to show you the autofill child folders that I have set here that just means if you set this folder all these other folders here are getting set for you so when I first wrote this you had to do a lot of things manually but after a while I was like yeah, I wanted it to be the less work possible. So that folder just I've never unchecked it. I have built some projects differently, and I'm I'm toying with the idea of getting to one or down to two projects: a data access component and a um, object library. Because I don't want to get rid of the object library. I could even get a um, just create a. Uh, like kind of a schema definition file but I still want to keep the gateway at the very least because I'll show you this is the very end of this video I'll show you the like how if you need to do any data access how you do it in data tier.net so let me just find gateway dot oh it's not sailing there so let's say I want to do a save for a project this is where it calls the you know we're calling save you just say saved equals gateway dot save project and you pass in the project as a reference and the reason why you do that is in case it's a new project by the time the project comes back the project ID if it's an identity auto insert it will be set so that is the this the that's kind of the easy way you know I've used entity framework for about eight years now and I'm pretty good at lambda expressions. There's things I can do, but there's just you know lambda expressions are very limited. I've had 
lambda expressions that you just can't do the same things as you can in a store procedure. Where in a store procedure you can, you know, write common CTEs or other things, you know, you need to do all in one query, all on the server in one place, where a lambda expression and my biggest criticism of Entity Framework is you have to deal with Entity Framework executes too much SQL on your server trying to figure out what it needs to save. And sometimes it, you know, I mean, it, for people that are not very SQL savvy is what I think Entity Framework is best at. But that's just my opinion. I, I kind of wish they would have used stored procedures, you know, Microsoft. When I first wrote the predecessor dataTier.net was called Rad Studio Code Generation Toolkit, and before that, it was an app I couldn't sell called Data Class Builder.net. And in that application, Data Class Builder, I tried to use Dynamic SQL like Microsoft did, and it worked. But I decided I had a client that wanted all store procedures about 12 years ago, and I made a, I spent all Christmas. It was actually this time of year, about two, about 12 years ago, because I. I, I, I didn't bill them, you know, I, I couldn't bill my client for changing my little tool, but once I changed my, my tool, I was able to build the data tier in minutes, not, you know, having to manually create stuff. And in the old days, you know, Link to SQL was your only, op after ADO, there was in Hibernate and Link to SQL and a few other options, but Entity Framework was very new and very clunky at the time. So, but I still like datatier.net mainly just because executing a, you know, calling gateway.find or gateway.save, and it, I'll show you the gateway class, and that's the very, very last thing I show you. And this class, I didn't used to code generate this class. I used to just manually create it whatever I needed, but after a while I was like, well, I can code generate this too. So for each method, you get a delete admin. You know, this is like the admin table. So here's my delete. It comes back, you know, let's see. So there's there's two ways to call it. That's why I do it like this. Yeah, you can either pass in the, the ID of the admin or you can pass in an object. An ad, an instance of an admin and excuse me. An instance of an admin object and the admin object will have the ID set, the admin ID. And here I pass in this temp. Let me show you this, right? This temp admin is just an object that is used to pass parameters from here to the actual data access component. This is where the actual uh, store procedures get called and the readers and the writers create the parameters for store procedures and the readers load your object. I'll just show you one reader, they're all the same. This is what I like over Entity Framework. This is built when you build your data tier in datatier.net you know, and if you change your database schema, this is always updated, so you don't, but Entity Framework, even in a production environment, figures this out at runtime. You know, a lot of that is cached in places and they're pretty efficient about it, but it's still, to me, things that shouldn't execute on your SQL server other than during development time, not production time, but that's just one of those, you know, what does Microsoft know? There's only 130,000 people there, and me and my dog created this, and I think it's better, so, you know, I saw this thing the other day, it was like, I wish I had the, the video, the image, but it was the whole world, and like, me, the person was saying, yeah, you're all wrong, and that's kind of the way I feel, I don't know if I could find that image, but I'll see if I can find it for the video, maybe. But all right, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about datatier.net, I'm going to try to start making some new videos now that I have converted it to. It now works for, you have an option when you create a new project. And I'll briefly, I know I keep saying it's over, but I don't get to talk very often. I spend a lot of time on my dog. Um, when you create a new project, you have an option to make it a .NET 5 project. And if you do that, this button right here, oh, I just realized there's a graph. I have a little graph right here. I may have to go look at where I hid my graph because that won't work with this button here. I'm gonna have to, I may have to make my little uh, project wizard a little bigger, but that involves changing more controls. But I'll, or uh, if you download the project from GitHub, which all the links will be in the description, let me go over here. There's an installer for
for the .NET 5, I mean for the .NET Framework project templates, it's right here. It's a VSIX installer, and that will install the project templates. So that way, when I'm over here in Visual Studio, if I want to create a new project for a .NET Framework, I can just say, I'll do it over here. After you install it, I'm not going to run the installer because I already have it installed. But once you install the datatier.net, you can just select this, the class library. Yeah. That's not, hang on. That's not coming up. Hang on. Sorry. My. Nope. Hang on. Gotta figure out what's going on here. Oh, it's data juggler. Dot net. Hang on. I know there's a way to uh data to see I liked the old uh There it is, datatier.net class library. Sorry, okay, so that's what it was. Why is it not? That's trying to do an ASP.net core application. Wait, there we go. Other results. That's what I wanted. Okay, so that's how you do. It's just a class library that has... Sorry, close this. I don't need it. It has these four projects, and that way when you build... It, uh, it updates. So anyway, sorry I'm really tired and it's probably not the best video you ever watched, but I wanted to just make a video of how I update datatier.net because it's kind of a, a neat, kind of a geeky neat thing to me, but using a tool to build itself, it's one of those things I've done a few times with datatier.net and it's, it's always a little, uh, I don't know, just kind of interesting that you're using something to build it. When robots stop building themselves is when we have to fear, but this is the first step to that. So, all right. Well, peace out. Happy Saturday. It's early in the morning, but let me have, if you have any questions, let me know. I, new videos are coming, and let me know if the idea of taking a database table, creating a data tier, and then having a little designer that just says you take some form, you take a form, and then you choose the fields you want you know, and say hit a button and either create a Windows form or a Blazor uh, component is kind of the way I'm thinking it's going to work. I haven't gotten this far. I haven't built anything yet. This is all, I had to get this part done first, and that's why I made this video. So, but with new updates coming soon, my goal is I have a new project coming up, and I think I'm going to get my first Windows form. Pro I might. There's one other vendor that I'm competing with, and I don't know. We'll see. I'm really bad in sales because I'm I'm too realistic and too honest. Lots of people lie and say a project takes this long just to get somebody started, and then they figure once they're done, then they're hooked. But I'm like, well, look, I have a client that wants something done by February 1st, and this is six weeks away, and so we haven't started it yet. So I'm kind of telling them they want a lot, but I explain it to them that they're going to have base functionality and then things we we add on, and it's probably not what they wanted to hear, but that's honest you know clients choose deadlines because that's what they want to pay for not what they they're not based on anything you know they're based on this is our budget and this is our we have to have it by this date but you know they're starting this now not you know last summer so it's a little kind of a you know I think the the deadline's realistic but it's a little it's it would be a lot of work to get it done that fast but billable hours are a good thing all right, well, thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye.